of women of color, specifically in America, it means jumping through a lot of hoops and going through a lot of struggles and obstacles to reach your dreams. I have to police myself because I'm afraid of how I'm going to be perceived. We deserve respect as women of color and we shouldn't be treated differently than others. I feel like we've let other people tell our narratives for so long that it's time for us to be able to tell our own stories. You wouldn't want somebody that's white like to make an article about you because they don't go through what you have to go through. For us right now, we're speaking our own stories, right? As women of color, like we don't need anyone else to do it, right? We have the means, we have the knowledge, we have the tools, and that's exactly what we're doing. It was career day. I was told by this man that was white that I was not gonna be able to go to a UC or a private school because of my skin color. I was like, well, what's the point now? Like, I was just so sad about that and it affected a lot of my mental health. At the end of ninth grade, I kind of just realized that that was bad of that person, but that motivated me. Currently, my school is predominantly like, they're, they're all Latino, you know? And, um, it's a very close-knit community, but then again, there are these gender roles and this like machismo, you know? Kids were kind of hanging out. And these two boys start talking about like this girl and they're like berating her with these like insults, like very misogynistic, very rude, very disrespectful. And I wanted to like speak up and say something and be like, hey, you can't talk about her like that. I felt like when they were disrespecting her, they were also like disrespecting me. And I just felt horrible and I didn't say anything because I felt like it wasn't my place to say anything. It wasn't, I don't know, I just, that's something I really regret. I remember my senior grad night was at Disneyland, like I'm sure it's for a lot of schools. And I remember walking down Main Street into one of the stores with my friends and I overheard some of the white workers say, you can tell today's ghetto night. I remember I felt shocked. I'm not sure if anybody ever heard too, some of my friends heard. No one ever said anything. And I think we just knew that you couldn't really say anything. Nothing was gonna change. If you are angry, then you're perceived as an angry Black woman, so you can't be angry. Um, if you're too assertive, then it's like you can't be too assertive, you can't be too smart, you can't. It's just kind of like living a lot of different facades, and you can never really be who you really are, or you never can really discover who you really are because you're always trying to like fit into someone else's image of what they think you should be. Any stereotype makes it hard for in, an individual to be an individual. No one person actually fits into a stereotype. It's not true. There may be aspects of that that are true, but then it's generalized on a whole group, which is unfair. For me, a stereotype has always felt like I've never fit in um, as opposed to being you know, dismissed for, you know, my skin color. It's always like, how do I fit in? How do I assimilate? Should I assimilate or should I embrace who I am? And um, yeah, that's been an ongoing struggle throughout my life. Um, the question is complicated because uh, my, you know, off the cuff, I would say no. I wouldn't want to be treated like a woman of color. As black women, we're going to be judged harsher if you have a bad day or if you have an off day, right? That's not only going to represent us and it will be a lasting image, right? But it's also like, you know, you then represent your whole community of black people. So I think those are where some of the pressures come from that, where it's hard for people to let down the guard. That is a mental health issue if you feel like you're living your life and you don't get to speak. It's like shaking a soda bottle, you're gonna pop. Like any time that a black woman complains about something, it's always like, oh, and gee, we have an issue, here we go. But it's kind of like, no, you know, like I'm hurting, you know, I don't wanna be strong right now because I'm in pain, you know, I'm emotional. And it's kind of like, we don't really get those chances to express that. 
but it's because we don't go to therapy. We don't get to talk about it. We're just supposed to take it. I don't see many people like me going to therapy. So I think it's really amazing what you're doing, showing, give, like you have a platform showing that if you need help, like it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be a woman of color and ask for help. If you're black and you don't know where you're from and you're trying to be accepted into American culture, it's not, you know, like American culture was not made for you to be there. American culture starts with slaves. It's not gonna be welcoming. It's not gonna have that same support and emotional like healing than African heritage. Yes. yes, right, it's like we do have these, Im you're exactly right, like we have these images that this country was made to de dehumanize and, and, and make us subordinate, right? For a purpose. And so it taught self-hate, it produced internalized oppression, it taught to not be unified, to reject our community, to reject our healing practices, it taught us to reject everything that empowered and affirmed us. Um, and so that reclaiming of identity of who we are is about promoting self-love, is about unity, right? Because the more that we work together, the more that we are in community and on the same page, the more that we trust each other, imagine that the power that we have and the affirmation and the promotion of our people and ourselves. As a representative of the community, how can you both empower and educate as well as break down the societal pressures from within? I created a website called girltalkhq.com and it's a platform where so many women and girls and non-binary people share their story. For me, growing up as an Indian girl, never seeing myself represented in the magazines I would read or the TV shows I would watch, it's now I get to make those decisions. I feel like I can at least do my part to put these stories out there, but I really want to place value on and give priority to women of color and young women as well. You have so much power, like y'all are so passionate. If you want to develop your leadership skills, right, regardless if it's um, to tackle domestic violence, sexual assault, teen dating violence and all of that, look at the resources in your community because there are people that want to invest in you and there are people that want to train you. Um, and there's resources out there. All you have to do is look. Make sure that your voice is heard and you don't let anyone silence you. Sometimes you just have to call people out uh, with microaggressions if they say something. It might be uncomfortable, but when you do it, it's a learning moment for them and you can change that one person, even if it's just that one time, it'll give them something to think about. And one of the, my things that I like to do to educate people is like if they say something that I feel like is a microaggression or a backhanded compliment, I'll just simply say, like, what do you mean by that? And then it makes them think about what they just said, and then it gives them a moment, and then it's usually them saying like, oh, I didn't mean, and they realize that what they said wasn't okay. This is all one big form of like intersectionality feminism. It's like, it's time to come together and realize that we experience the same overlapping issues. I just think it's time that we, we listen to each other, yeah.